Oh, hi guys, it's fun. It's nice to be here on a stage after so long again, here on the yellow stage at Latitude 59. Today, we are talking about Fukuoka City in southern western Japan. It's a startup hub of the area down there. If you don't know where it is, Fukuoka is like right down the bottom of Japan. It's on the edge down there, and uh, it's got about a million, million and a half to something like that population. Lot of uh, colleges and universities, and it's also a startup hub of the greater area of southern Japan. It's a good place to do business. Not only that, being in the south of Japan, it's like really close to Korea, mainland China, Taiwan. It's very well geographically suited. So what we're going to do on this pitch stage today is we are going to be hearing from uh, three startups from Fukuoka City area. They're going to be telling us about what they do. Then our Estonian judges will then be uh, asking them questions. Then in the second half of the session, we are going to switch it and we are going to be having three Estonian startups who will be giving their pitches, and then we will have judges from Fukuoka City to ask them questions. At the end of this, we're actually going to be having two prizes announced. One is for our Japanese teams, and one is for our Estonian teams. But basically, they're the same thing. Each team from each country is going to get a trip over to the other country. So the Estonian winners will get a ticket to Japan. They're going to get a year of business consulting and uh, access to startup incubators over there. And the same thing with our Japanese colleagues. The winners from the Japanese side are going to get some tickets to come over here. They're going to get training and coaching as well on the Estonian side. So it's a real cross-cultural exchange happening here today, and it's very exciting. So. To introduce us to Fukuoka City a little bit more, we have a special greeting from the mayor of Fukuoka City. Please take it away, Mr. Takashima. This is Soichiro Takashima, mayor of Fukuoka City. Some of you may not know about Fukuoka, so let me talk a bit about it. Fukuoka City is in the west of Japan and is at the heart of the ever-growing East Asia, centered between China, South Korea, and Taiwan. The city is home to 1.6 million people. Our population growth is number one in Japan and is still growing. Fukuoka is also a city with many young people. In Fukuoka city alone, there are over 20 universities and colleges and many internships. It is not hard for you to find good talent, but I think the best feature is our city's livability. I know Tallinn is a romantic city, but Fukuoka is a beautiful city too. Our rich nature being close to our city center is a great feature. The city is also famous for its delicious cuisine. These features have all been highly valued by the media worldwide. Also, 95% of our residents said Fukuoka was easy to live in, in a recent survey. These features have made Fukuoka the home to the fastest growing foreign population out of all major cities in Japan. Next, I'd like to introduce how we support startups. As the startup city of Japan, Fukuoka has made partners around the world to mutually support startup businesses. We have partnered with EAS, Startup Estonia, and Technopol in Estonia, and we have developing our network through this scheme. The business networking between Estonia and Fukuoka has had great success. For example, Estonia's educational venture K-12 Technologies partnered with an institution in Fukuoka. They held a proof-of-concept demo for their educational platform at a junior high school in January. Fukuoka also offered complete support for Stigo, the electric bike maker, and great who make reusable straw from reeds. 
These companies got our complete support from product localization through to potential business matching to feed the Japanese market, and their sales are going well. Fukuoka City is also the only deregulated zone in Japan, recognized by the national government, allowing many special visa and tax benefits, especially for startups. One example is Saul Technology, an Estonian company that has used these schemes and entered the Fukuoka market. They came to Japan using our startup visa scheme, got an office, and qualified for reduced taxes. We have special support schemes to help with rent for office and the living space. We also have our own incubation facility for companies to set up in Fukuoka. Specialists there give free support in English, Spanish, yeah. and Chinese. Yeah. Perfect. Experts such as lawyers and okay. tax consultants are on site too to give free advice on starting up. As you can see, Fukuoka is so supportive for foreigners. Many foreign entrepreneurs are gathering in our city. So, to all of you listening today, once the COVID-19 situation has calmed down, be sure to visit Fukuoka City. And I'm sure you will feel firsthand our city's wonders for yourself. Thank you for listening. See you soon. Thank you, Mr. Takashima. A great personality, a great spokesperson for Fukuoka City in southwestern Japan is what we're talking about today. Okay, so the way we're going to do it is we are going to be having our three Japanese companies pitching first. They are going to be doing it remotely. We've already got the video of their pitches. And then after each of the pitches, we're going to be having a live cross via Skype to a representative of the company who will then be able to answer the questions of our Estonian jury. So let's bring that Estonian jury to the stage right now. I'd like to introduce Mr. Raido Lember of Estonian Investment Agency, Ms. Lisi Org of Startup Estonia, and Ms. Trin Ilves of Technopol. Welcome. Okay, we're going well today. How are your microphones? Everything's looking good? Yes, I think. Yes, it works. yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Have either of the three of you been to Fukuoka? Yes. Oh, you did go there. Okay. How was it for you? How was it to be there? It is a romantic city. Okay. <laughs> I thought Tallinn was the romantic city. But it, it's also a romantic oh, they're city. They're both romantic yes. city. Okay. Very romantic. Okay. Have you been to the idol? It's just Tokyo, unfortunately, but planning, planning to go next there too. Okay. Lisi? I haven't, but I would really like to go. Mm. I've been to Tokyo a few times myself, and now I'm thinking about Fukuoka as well. It seems like a take that bullet train all the way down there. It's going to be nice. OK, tech team, let's do this. Are we good to go over there? We're going to make it happen. We have our first company from Fukuoka City. And the name of this startup is Koleko. And uh, Koleiko, as you might say, they're a, a, a company that is doing a clothes sharing for high-end brands. So they're using you were able to share the high-end clothing brands. They've got a logistic system where they're using a cleaning store as a hub. And then you can essentially do like a ride sharing kind of thing, but with high quality clothing. So it's a very innovative idea. And to hear more about it, we're going to hear the pitch now from Mr. Koki Hamasaki. Take it away. OK, so hello, everyone. My name is Koki Hamasaki, and I'm the CEO of, CEO of Coleco Inc. Today, I'm going to talk about the whole new P2P fashion rental service, Coleco. I have a sister who is 25 years old saying, I have nothing to wear every day. So I went to her room and walked into her closet and saw a bunch of clothes inside it. I thought that was pretty interesting and did, did a research on it. Then I found out that Japanese female have 200 clothes in average, but they only wear 50 of them. And I thought that was interesting because 75% of your clothes are just sleeping inside your closet. And this will add up to $35 billion. This is only in Japan. Isn't this hilarious? So our service 
is a P2P luxury fashion render platform, which, um, which will be an initiative to the usual fast fashion. And we can P2P rent our luxury fashion with each other. Our point is that we are going to use dry cleaners as a hub to construct our regional logistics. Did you know that there are more than 7,000 dry cleaners in Tokyo? Since, um, since then, we are going to use those dry cleaners as our Coleco hubs so that we can construct the regional logistics. Our service looks like this. Lender will send their clothes to Coleco and we will construct their own online closet. Those clothes will be stuck into a dry cleaner at town A and B. If you want to rent a red t-shirt, you can just go to town A's dry cleaner and pick up immediately. If you want to rent a pink skirt and if it's in town B, you can book it by 5 p.m. and pick up in the next morning. The business model is pretty simple that we're going to take 30% of commission fee. And we're also considering about the risks um, by taking the personal IDs and peer reviewings and holding a guarantee with the companies. Since our Coleco is copy and pasteable model, we're not looking in Fukuoka, but also in Tokyo, Japan, and other countries over Asia and into the world. We consist of four members at Kyushu University, and we are based in Fukuoka. City, and we also got help from Ministry of the Environment. Finally, let me talk about our vision. Our vision is to enrich the us as well as excite the people. There are many apps and services that excite people, but we are like the real thing is to enrich the earth. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Koki. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Koki. Okay, do we have you on the live stream? Do we have Mr. Koki on the live stream to answer questions from our judges? There you are. How are you, Mr. Koki? Okay, just a second. We got to get the audio going on. It's fine. We got the link. Is it working now? Oh yes, yes. sir, Mr. Koki. Thank you. We oh. can hear you. Tremendous. Finally. Okay, okay, <laughs> Sorry so. For the no problem. So, what we're going to do now is we have our Estonian judges and they'll ask you a, a question or two. Please take it away. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, love your business model, love sustainable businesses and the, the thing you're trying to achieve there. But I have a question about your marketing strategy outside Japan. What's your plans there? Thank you very much. Our marketing strategy is very simple that uh, we're first focusing on female closing rental. And then first, we're starting now this service at Fukuoka, but we're trying to extend to Tokyo, Osaka, and other common cities in Japan. And after that, we're looking to Asia. So our, well, primal uh, strategy is to take the Japan. Okay. Next question. How many laundromats have you already signed up to this app? Thank you for the question. Um, we've launched this uh, service three weeks ago, and we have 75 people signed up for this service. But how many laundromats? Sir, can you repeat that again? How many dry cleaning um, hubs, oh, oh, laundromats? For dry cleaner hubs, we have five dry cleaner hubs in Fukuoka. And I think I have a follow-up question for that. So um, you said the hubs are dry cleaners, but uh, have you thought mm -hmm. about what the dry cleaners get for that? Like, what do they get out of your idea, basically? Yes, exactly. Um, Japanese young people are not using dry, dry cleaners very much. And the reason why is the suits or other clothes can be washed in the house. And dry cleaners want many young people, but they can't. And that's the problem right now. So our service co also connects young people and dry cleaners. And that's a merit for them. So basically, you are providing more traffic for these dry cleaners. 
Yes. Okay, very good. We need to leave it there. Thank you very much, Mr. Cocky. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to cut over there. And also, maybe one thing that's a little bit cultural over that, my observation, many, many more dry cleaners in Japan than, for example, in Estonia. So what's the inspiration? There's a lot of them that need work. So maybe that's a cultural difference there. Okay, our next startup from Fukuoka City is called OnGrid Engineering, and they are providing an AI image recognition platform to inspect roadsides, bridges, tunnels, this sort of thing. Uh, their main client is already the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, and Transport. So they're using the AI. They can inspect and see where there's damage. Uh, they can also produce computer-aided design with this. And of course, this is excellent because this very important uh, safety inspections can be done without the human eye and have the AI do it, which should be much more reliable. Okay, to give us the video pitch, uh, the pitching will be done by Mr. Itaro Matsuo, who is an engineer for on-grid engineering, and the translator will be Ms. Utako Onoyama as well. So please take, the, take it away. Hello, my name is Utako from on-grid Japan. Do you know these collapses in Silver Bridge in the US in 1967 and Sasago Tunnel in Yamanashi, Japan in 2012? We've been facing new social issues. Although these accidents let us make legislation for infra infrastructure, both in the US and Japan, there will be a global issue in the future. There are not enough staff for maintenance. There's also an increase of human error because of labor shortage. To solve this issue, We've been developing inspection robots and drawing service using artificial intelligence. We've made it possible to split the job in the field work and office work using inspection robots and our original drawing system. Although we've accomplished work efficiency, accepting inexperienced staff, we still need more workers. As for our original drawing system, it connects the pictures automatically and AI recognizes choking parts inside the pictures. The person needs to confirm in the end. As there is numerically manageable database, anyone, even who does not understand Japanese can use this system. We had hired foreign students and verified whether they could make drawings using the database. As a result, the drawings had almost reached levels of usual drawings by experienced technicians. We'd like to connect Estonian companies which can tackle social issues together with us using our original drawing system. You do not need experience, nor a special qualification to use this system, regardless age and gender. We'd like to take this opportunity to establish our farm in Estonia in the future. And also we want to co-create our drawing system, robotic development, as well as attempts using AI. Why don't you join us to tackle social issues with us? This is our motto, reduce sadness and increase happiness by technology. Thank you for your attention. All right, thank you, Ms. Utako. All right, so let's see how our video link goes this time. There you are. And this is Mr. Itaro Matsuo. Hello, sir. Oh. <laughs> okay. So are we just, uh, there we go. We can see you on our screen there. So now we will have some questions from the Estonian judges, please. Yes, thank you for the pitch. Could you tell me a little bit more about your team? Our team.
Our team consists of 15 members. Five members mainly uh, go to, uh, outside and during the um, actual inspection outside. And the other person will uh, in charge of uh, doing an uh, internal job, uh, which is uh, office work. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I really, really uh, loved your motto. Uh, I would just like to ask, um, what is your business model? How do you earn money? Our uh, business model um, is, uh, also, um, of course, uh, doing inspection and, and make it uh, if uh, if sent, and uh, we get the um, inspection fee from the uh, institute, uh, common institute. Okay, maybe. Um, very quickly, very quickly. Very, third question, very uh, related to that, is the monetization models. What, uh, what kind of, is it the software as a service? What is your monetization in your product or service? What's the model there? Can you explain a bit that? <laughs> Good job. Good job. Uh, tell, tell us the uh, key point again. Yeah. Uh, what kind of uh, packages do you sell for your clients? Is it like a software product? Is it a license fee? What, what type of business model uh, is it at the product end? Hmm? Or the actual robots? Yeah. Hmm. Um, so what do you actually sell to your clients? Uh, after uh, developing robot, uh, we would like to tell them. Okay. To sell the robots. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Mr. Itaru. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Please, round of applause for Mr. Itaru. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have one more team from Fukuoka City in Japan. This team coming up next is Ornizon Systems. And Ornizon Systems have a technology that can be used to transfer files and pictures extremely quickly uh, over the internet, obviously. They're delivering, for example, live pictures with various subtitles extremely fast, and it's already being used by a number of very big Japanese media companies. So we're gonna hear the video pitch now from Mrs. Abihel Asha Verma, who's a software engineer for Uzoni Systems. Hello, everyone. I'm Abhil Asha. I work as a software engineer for Shinizan Systems. We offer customizable media production services to broadcasting stations and advertising agencies. There are three key features that content holders look for in a media production service application. First one is high-speed data transfer. Second one, media content access control. And last but not the least, closed caption support. And JoinView offers it all, and even more. It streamlines the whole video production application process and it gives you a large volume media transfer at a high speed utilizing UDP protocols. Its cloud-based media asset management system provides granular level content access control, and it supports AI-generated closed captioning and translation. And just last month, we rolled out a new feature called OCI Editor. This AI-supported feature automates the process of supports highlight video creation saving a huge amount of time in manual content editing. We provide services to 129 stations across Japan with 100 servers and over 4,000 users. A single user data transfer capacity is 10 GB to 2 TB data per day, and media analysis capacity is 150 hours video per day. Now, moving on to the market, 
total post production broadcasting market of japan has business of 170 billion yen and video editing market is 180 billion yen out of which we cover 200 million and 100 million yen market respectively and we are targeting 30 billion in coming years so in order to achieve that target we have started expanding in sports media sector and have plans to collaborate with local government and medical institutions right now our main competition is services like g suits which offer basic services for free highly suitable for small scale businesses but when it comes to dealing with large amount of data join view is the most pocket friendly option available our main competition is services like uh g suit so we have one what do we have to offer in uh, what do we have to offer to make one up with those competition we offer our video production services as a part of single package which is highly flexible and customizable on demand so if you are looking for services in media production and distribution join view is your one stop solution you can check us out at www.unison.co co.jp thank you so much very nice thank you ms varma okay do we have ms varma there you are hello ma'am hello nice hello. to see you okay we have some questions for so pardon me no that was painful to watch the video <laughs> you're too <laughs> modest okay we have some questions from our estonian judges please Yeah no that was great thank okay. you. Uh, I'm really happy to see that you already have traction but I just want would like to know what makes you unique or uh, what is your unique selling point. Okay so in terms of this particular application we join you. It's uh, a media sharing and at the same time as with management application. So when you say what makes us unique then uh, Let's say um, in Japanese market, uh, we already have a customer base, so we already consider us reliable. Uh, we have a customization option available, like based on the customer needs, we can provide enhancements and uh, additional services to our packages, which you will not find with such packages. And uh, one other thing for uh, other services, you have to what you to like small features. Make it one whole asset management system, but we provide all these solution in one package. So uh, it makes everything easy and keeps customer happy. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. What is the pricing model of your platform? Uh, let's say for uh, we provide monthly subscriptions. So uh, let's say for our basic. services it's basic one month services uh, we provide our services for 500 euros so the infrastructure cost is about 30% of that so rest 70% is our revenue and that can vary based upon the number of users and the data uh, uh, to well, answer your question yes one more question Kinder, very yeah. quickly yes. Quick one, yeah. Tell us, tell us about the strengths of your team. What makes your team so strong oh. to make it happen to take over okay. Google, like the likes our, of Google? Okay, uh, our company has 85 uh, employees, but out of those 85, we have 50 software engineers, and our company encourages each and every one of us to be an all-rounder. You know, like a one-man team. So almost all of us can. do everything like network setup production development deployment and then uh, you know talking with customers and uh, hearing their requirement so it's like every person is a one man team so what does what that does is it, uh, it uh, you know it decreases the dependency so in case of google well, you don't have to keep transferring your request if in case you have a problem to different people the person can look into it and say okay this is the issue and they can provide you Okay, very so, good. We do need to leave it there, unfortunately. Fun. Sorry, pardon me, Ms. Verma. Pardon me. Thank you. Oh, good. All right, thank you. Thank Please, you one so more round of applause. Onizo. 
Okay, thank you, Estonian judges. I think you can sit there and, and chill out if you'd like for a little while. Okay, what we are going to do now is we're going to have the opposite side of uh, our presentations today. We are now going to be hearing from our Estonian startup teams. We've got three of them. We're, again, we are going to be having the video pitches. And then for two of the companies, we're actually going to be having the representative live on the stage. Uh, one of the companies will be doing it remotely. So that also means that we have three esteemed judges from Fukuoka City to ask the questions of our Estonian companies. So I would like to introduce our Japanese jury. We have Mr. Mumu of the Global Startup Center. We have Ms. Ichibori uh, of Fukuoka Directive Council and Mr. Muori of Fukuoka Growth Next. Hi, we can see you up there. Hello to the three of you. Hi, hello. Hi. Tremendous. Okay, you can hear us. This is going very nice. Thank you. We're very happy to have the three of you here today. So, our first Estonian company is called Car for Future Technologies. They work with electric vehicles. The first thing they're doing is uh, ensuring that you can, uh, using a technology to match your electric vehicle with the correct charging station, but they also have technology to enable energy transfer between vehicles, from vehicle to vehicle, uh, which could be a very interesting use. And they also have a wireless component to their technology as well. So to give the video pitch for Car for Future Technologies, I'd like to introduce Mr. Uh, Mr. Kut Lutan Hakan. Hello, my name is Kut Lutan Hakan. I'm co-founder of Car for Future. Car for Future is an energy sharing network and energy transfer hardware developed with blockchain technology for electric vehicles and autonomous car. Uh, let's imagine a scenario for electric vehicle driver. The weather is so good and you decided to go seaside with your family and you think that you, you can take a charge on the road, but you suddenly realize something. If you want to take some energy on the road, you need to subscribe to the charging station. And even that, you subscribe to the charging station, you have to carry out the RFID activation card all the time. And then you find the good charging station, the socket uh, should be compatible with your car because there's that's eight different type of uh, socket technology using. And that kind of problem creates a kind of the range exit because you, you have to do this the same for every charging station. Car for Future comes to bring together three different segments in the one service. Car for Future is providing nearest charging unit information, reservation, and online payment service. Also, a create an open platform for the personal charging station sharing. It's a kind of the marketplace. Uh, Car for Future has a peer to peer value for our customers. It's so an energy transfer from vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to the charging station. Because in case of need, the energy required should be provided from the any location. And with this wireless universal circuit, every station and every vehicle will be uh, compatible your car for the energy transfer. Our target market included uh, almost 4 million electric vehicles, but right now we are focused on the 2 million electric vehicles effectively. Right now, the all there were uh, 4 million electric vehicles, but in 2030, uh, 36 million will, uh, electric vehicles will be on the road, and 5.8 billion market size will be open for the all industries. Our customer segment is separated to four different stages, B2C DV drivers, corporate fleets, rental companies, and charging station companies. Uh, right now, there are many charging stations on the board, and the other charging station will join, and right now, 1,000 uh, 200 charging station uh, included the Car for Future network. Uh, we have a couple of different uh, competitors, but we are focused on our differences because we are not only energy sharing network, also providing energy transfer from vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to the charging station. Also, we integrated our payment server with the blockchain integration, and you can rise all uh, rise, uh, tax advantages. Uh, we test ourselves in many competition in America, uh, Far East, and Europe, and we became a corporate in Estonia. 2019 and after that became an uh, international company. Our co-founder team come together three uh, different business persons, uh, two software engineers and one business administration. Also our advisor board come together many executive level business person. Uh, Car for Future, say thanks. Very good. 
Thank you, Mr. Hakan. Okay, we're going to do the video link now. We have Mr. Hakan. There you are. How are you today, sir? Okay, we're just working out your audio there. Can you try again? Okay. Can yes. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. No problems. We under, it was just a mute problem. So excellent, you're there. And do we get the judges on the screen as well? Is that how this works? Just trying to hook in. There we are. We can look at the wonders of technology. <laughs> we can see our three Japanese judges there. So our uh, judges from Fukuoka City, do you have some questions for Mr. Hakan? Hi, Hakan. Uh, thanks, thanks for your pitch. Uh, could you tell me more about your charging technology? Uh, as you may know, uh, all Japanese cars are charged with the uh, same charging technology uh, called Chademo. Uh, do you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, does your product uh, still work in Japanese market? No. Uh, our product our product is the providing our, the providing our service in the European market in the first, and our feature plan will be in America and forest, and especially the Japanese and the China market. And our product is compatible for every uh, type of uh, charging station because we transfer the energy uh, without any connection. It's the wireless transfer. Oh, yeah. Okay, great time. Thank you, by the way. Okay, another question, perhaps. Okay. Any question? All right, just doing the link there. No, we're not hearing any more questions from our Japanese team there, unfortunately. So we're going to move on. Thank you, Mr. Hakan. Have a good day, sir. Thank you. You too. Okay, our uh, next team uh, coming up is CommuniCare. Uh, there we go. So uh, the next team is CommuniCare. Uh, and CommuniCare, we've got our video pitch ready to go. Look, I'm going to admit I copy and pasted the wrong thing. I'm not quite sure what's happening with CommuniCare. We're going to hear it all in the video pitch. I was about to say, their business model is very similar to car for futures Lewis made a boo-boo. However, let's take it away. We have Mr. Norman Vesta from Communique, and he's going to give us the pitch. Hello, my name is Norman, and I'm the CEO of Communique. Communique is a social platform to direct volunteers to nursing homes in order to relieve the lack of communication with the outside world. We are developing a one-of-a-kind video platform and this application has reached its journey after a year of surveys and testing by our team. The aim is to create a network of nursing homes and individual clients where our application hardware would help them communicate with people who want to talk to them for a certain price. And only does this help alleviate the lack of communication in nursing homes and with the elderly, but it also makes people money from home. The digital solution that we're developing is uh, one of a kind designed just for the elderly. It has an enhanced audio, accidental touch, and data protection, high quality and user friendly video, and also it has an up to date power saving mode and an automatic answering system, which is crucial for the elderly as they often get really, really puzzled how can they answer a call. Our current market where we're at, Estonia has 68 active care homes and 80% of the clients in nursing homes get visited by their relatives 2.3 times a year, which is just insane. We want to alleviate this with our solution. Our business model looks like this, that our nursing homes pay a multi-subscription for the amount of depending on the package that they receive. And we're also motivating our community constantly to keep our talkers and our elderly happy. Our vision is to be the leading figure in healthy aging innovation and reaching a social impact up to 100,000 elderly. Our market in the United States 
Scandinavia, England, China, and the global market is huge. The global market has an estimated $3.4 billion reach. When we talk about Japan, there's a record high amount of elderly, 28.1% of the population, and an estimated 83% of those feel loneliness. And the market is just suited for the private use application that we provide. Our team is an experienced team who has worked on it for a year. We have B, our operating officer, financial officer, and also a marketing officer with a marketing team. We provide three different packages, a limited, medium, and advanced package to suit every elderly who wants to talk to someone. Our future plans is to have 20 pre-registered clients by autumn then by 2021 spring, we want to launch our digital solution. And by next year winter, we want to expand to the UK and Japan. By 2022 winter, we want to expand to the whole Scandinavia. And then there's the whole Asian and American market. By looking at our partners, our investors and people who will judge us can see that we know how to communicate and we know how to do partnerships with many, many known firms in Estonia. We also wish to do this in all our markets that we provide our services in, would that be in the UK or Japan. We're really looking forward to working with the government of Japan and uh, entering that market so we can uh, further alleviate the problem that uh, Japan has within their elderly. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Okay, and we're having Norman come up to the stage right now. He's going to be live here. In Tallinn, nice to see you again. You've just yes. had the video and here you are. What a champ. Yes, hello. Our judges from Fukuoka City, do you have some questions for Mr. Norman? Hi, Norman. Um, I have a question. Why did you choose volunteer for their family? Oh, I'm sorry. Could you please repeat? There was an error with the sound. Could you repeat the question, please? Sure. Uh, why did you choose volunteers, not uh, your friends or family? Uh, yes. So the volunteers, uh, they can sign up through our uh, website, actually. And uh, we chose volunteers at first because uh, we thought that uh, uh, we didn't know that there's a business model uh, in, our, in, our actually, in our solution. But uh, when we're working with the digital solution, then we're actually going to uh, pay people that are going to talk to the elderly because we see that people can actually make money from home if they, if they actually use our application that we're developing right now. But we still have a social movement where we actually physically go into nursing homes and uh, talk to the people there because uh, this is a social enterprise and we uh, want to show that uh, we actually care about our clients. Okay, very good. Do we have any more questions? One more question perhaps? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, two quick questions from my side. First, and uh, your products are already ready to go to the market. Second question is that, and actually I cannot easily imagine that, that the senior people want to talk to the young people, but uh, they want to talk to the senior people. What do you think? Excellent questions. Yes, so right now uh, in uh, Tartu County, we have uh, six clients and in uh, Haryuma, we have uh, one client. And uh, we're planning to expand to Haryuma right now and get the pre-registered clients. Uh, we're actually doing surveys in the UK uh, as well right now. And when it comes to the volunteers, we have in Tartu County, 200 active volunteers and we have 3,000 people signed up to actually get our newsletter and uh, see if uh, they want to actually help alleviate the problem and make some money from home. Okay, all good. We do need to leave it there. Thank you, judges. Thank you, Mr. Norman. Thank you, Thank you sir. Okay, we have one more pitch from our final Estonian company. This company is called Power Up Fuel Cell, and they are the producer of a best-in-class hydrogen cell-based electric generator. Uh, and it's super advanced, it's got no emissions, it's compact, it's silent. If you can imagine, there used to be old diesel generators, you had to put fuel in them, they make a big sound, it takes a lot of smell. These are emissionless and very uh, economical. So, to tell us about Power Up Fuel Cell Technology, we have the pitch from Dr. Iva Krusenberg. 
My name is Ivar Kusenberg and I'm a CEO of PowerUp Energy Technologies. PowerUp is uh, producing hydrogen fuel cell based the smart electric generators. Our first feature market is the maritime market and that's how the sailors really visualize the sailing. However, the reality is totally different. Uh, even if they have two diesel generators on their boat, uh, it's quite often that both of these fail. Besides that, uh, also there's uh, batteries, but these are too heavy and also they're a huge fire hazard. So the boat owners may lose their boat in the middle of the ocean or in the worst case in their life. Uh, besides these uh, heavy, noisy and smelly diesel generators and the batteries, there's also obvious the solar panels, panels and the wind turbines, but these are also proved to be not used for many applications, including the maritime, because they are too weather dependent and often unreliable. Because of all of that, uh, Power Up Air Hypnosis has developed uh, this amazing product, Up 400. It's only 10 kilograms and it's the size of a small toolbox. Uh, what is wonderful, it doesn't need any maintenance and it's totally silent. On top of that, uh, it gives up about 400 watts continuous power, which is enough to basically run everything on the boat or on a camping car or anywhere else. And uh, Frankly speaking, it's zero um, emission technology, and the only emission emitted by the product is water vapor. And uh, it's 20 times lighter than the best batteries on the, on the market, which uh, gives huge advantage over the current battery technology. Um, we have also secured already a safe channels for our product uh, in the United States, in France, Germany, uh, in Scandinavia, and we are currently also looking for the distributors in Asia. And obviously we are not the only ones on the market. We have also some competitors, um, but uh, these are, um, their output power is uh, almost as twice lower than ours. And uh, our market obviously is not limited only to the maritime. We can sell our product also to the recreational vehicles, to the telecommunication companies and military. And uh, our scale-up plan also includes the product for the refrigerated containers. And uh, because of that, we estimate uh, that we are able within five years period to get to the revenue of 150 million euros. And if you're asking if the hydrogen is available, yes, it is. And uh, why we can make it? Because of our amazing technology and a team with a real variety of skills. And we are fundraising and looking for 600,000 euros, which goes to the sales marketing and the production range extension. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Krusenberg. All right, now to answer the Q&A uh, about the company, please welcome to the stage Mr. Michael Kies. Michael, please welcome, sir. And we have our judges from Fukuoka City. Judges from Fukuoka City, would you like to give some questions, please? Yes, I have a question. Uh, it's big safety. And how safe your product is compared to the existing product in market? So about safety, <clears throat> I would like to say that hydrogen is considered to be explosive, but so is also other gases. They are highly flammable, and hydrogen is actually not more uh, not more dangerous than natural gas. Because if you look at leak, natural gas is heavy; it's gonna fill the room from bottom to up. But hydrogen is the lightest element in the universe. So if there's a leak, it's just going to dissipate in the atmosphere. And we also include uh, hydrogen sensors. So in case there's a leak, uh, boat owner can put it in the, in the roof, basically, or the ceiling. And they will know that there is a leakage. And then they can just open the windows, and that's it. Hmm. Very good. Any more questions? Hi, uh, I have a question. 
uh, compared with uh, other resources uh, such as diesel engine or something, uh, how is the cost efficiency in total, uh, including initial and planning cost? Okay. Could you repeat that? What's the total cost? I mean, if you're counting buying the stuff, if you're counting ongoing costs, how does it compare to a traditional diesel engine? Okay, so... Yeah, exactly. Okay. For the client, the main win is the maintenance and convenience. Because for diesel generators, you will have to do regular maintenance every 6 to 12 months. You will have to change oil and pelts and everything. With us, there's no moving parts inside the generator. So this means you don't have to open the generator. You are not even allowed to open it, actually. So uh, in, in the long term, in let's say four to five years, it's actually going to add up and it's going to be um, like a feasible product. OK. OK, uh, interesting. Thank you. Very good. Any more questions? No problems. OK, thank you, judges from Fukuoka Sita. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, sir. Well, please, round of applause for all of our Japanese teams here doing the pitches. Thank you, our Estonian teams as well. So now we are going to have a short break uh, while the judges from Fukuoka City and also our judges from here in Estonia make their decisions. So while they are doing that, we're going to have a short five minute video talking about Fukuoka City and telling us more about the history and the cutting edge technology. Let's go. Thank you. 
Let's do it. Judges, how are you? Good? Okay. We saw some, we've seen some stuff. We've learned a few things. Okay. You've agreed on who it's going to be. So, Raida, would you like to stand up, please, and uh, tell us your thoughts, and then, of course, who is getting that ticket to come to Estonia? Ready to announce? Yeah, I can say that. Well, we had big fights. Honest to God, I, we had those fights. We were almost wrestling. It doesn't look like a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but here in Estonia, we stand for innovation and uh, forward-looking decisions, and that took on uh, the final, final role in making the winner. So we really love innovation that a couple, uh, couple of you were doing there. And uh, so the winner of today's competition from the Estonian judges is uh, On Grid. Applause. On Grid technology, On Grid engineering. <clears throat> So we, we see the potential of this solution that you have. We didn't really get uh, the full idea of the marketing strategy, the full team build up and all that, but we love the innovation bit and we see the potential this solution has, the robots or the service you might offer. And we have a lot of partners that we can offer in this field from Estonia as well. And the innovation grants and the government support in Push, to push those technologies, we have it all here. So we see this great match. But to come back to others, the clothes, we love the sustainability and the clothes sharing business models. We're all for sustainability, but it's lacking the innovation part. So that's where it dropped out and the U European bit. And the guys going against Google with their fancy uh, software solution, you have balls and we admire that. So we wish you good luck the rest of you as well. And uh, we wish you all come to Estonia as well and explore those opportunities we can offer here too. Very Thank good. you. Thank you, Radil. Congratulations to OnGrid. Okay, now we have our judges from Fukuoka City. Please, can you tell us which company you like the most, please? <laughs> And uh, before I talk this PT result, we just saw the production video of Fukuoka City, right? And I just realized the Fukuoka City is so beautiful. It is good to know for me as well. So, they, so they, your people have come here. And uh, uh, actually, the Fukuoka City government us to there's only one company in Italy, they ask us to uh, all of them. And uh, all the three companies uh, really related to the sort of the social issue and also they related to the sort of a characteristic of Fukuoka city. In the Fukuoka, there are a couple of car factory. Also, the, of course, uh, all the uh, city in Japan are facing the uh, the, uh, the problem for the senior people, elderly people, and uh, uh, Fukuoka City uh, is uh, one of the advanced hydrogen technology city. That's why the, all the startup are really related to the Fukuoka City. And uh, our conclusion is that. Uh, okay, sorry, we had some. Uh... The audio drop out there in the end. Sorry. Which which uh, which of the teams was the winner? Yes. Maybe I might change the mind, but before changing the mind, the winner is Power Up. Power Up. Congratulations. Please come to the stage, Michael. Great. Thank you. Very good. Uh, this uh, this actually gives us lots of uh, confidence and. I'm really excited to fly to the romantic city of uh, Fukuoka. <laughs> ah, good man, good man. Okay, one more round of applause for Power Up. Thank you. Okay, we need to leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you to our representatives from Fukuoka City. Thank you to our representatives here from Estonia. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye bye.